What happens when you fall into a black hole, and what does that look like for someone outside the black hole? I'm not just going to show you those answers, I'm going to show you how to derive those answers for yourself. We're going to start with a space-time diagram. I wish I had time to explain what that is, but believe me I've tried. And if I did, the video would be twice as long. I'm standing at the origin of the space-time diagram, and two light rays, one travelling left to right and the other right to left, whiz by me. They travel along 45 degree lines, the dotted red ones, and they divide the space up into four quadrants. Everything that I do in the future takes place in the topmost quadrant. It's called the future light cone, and I can't escape from it. I have a friend, Alice, who's initially standing next to me. If she wants to meet up with me, she's going to have to enter my future light cone. But, well, Alice is not a particularly great friend, because she's decided that she never wants to interact with me again. And the only way she can be sure of that is if she avoids crossing either of those two light rays. Alice is going to have to start moving away from me. And fast. Suppose she's able to constantly accelerate just enough to ensure that she never enters my future light cone. Then she's going to get closer and closer to the speed of light. But of course she can never exceed the speed of light. And so the path she follows gets closer and closer to the boundary of the light cone, but never quite touches it. If we reflect the path Alice took in the x-axis, the resultant curve is a familiar one, it's called a hyperbola. Any object that's accelerating at a constant rate traces out a hyperbola on a space-time diagram. Alice has not only decided on avoiding me entirely, but she's also convinced Bob to do the same. Bob starts off closer to me than Alice, and so to avoid entering my future light cone, he's going to have to accelerate even harder than Alice did. His path is also a hyperbola, but because he's accelerating more, his hyperbola is sharper than Alice's. <laughs> my future light cone is looking pretty lonely right now. Let's try and imagine a parallel universe, where Bob decided he wanted to meet up with me instead. It's fun to imagine. Bob and I agree to meet halfway between the two of us, so I start moving off to the right and Bob to the left. Of course, he has to enter my future light cone if he wants to meet with me. And what does Alice see of Bob's betrayal? Well, in order to see Bob in the first place, light has to travel from Bob to Alice's eyes. And we can easily draw the path of those light rays on the space-time diagram. Remember that light travels at 45 degrees. So Alice has already started accelerating away from me when she sees Bob begin to move. Let's suppose Bob emits a light every second. Perhaps he's wearing a lighthouse on his head. Then on the next flash of the light, Alice will have seen Bob move towards me. Let's draw in all of the flashes. Can you see that because of the way that Alice is moving, the later flashes have to travel further to reach Alice. And so the time between each flash, from Alice's perspective, gets longer and longer. That's just a consequence of special relativity called time dilation. Time appears to slow down as you get close to the speed of light. In fact, just as Bob enters into my future light cone, he emits another flash of light. But Alice is never going to see that flash, because she is never going to cross the path that that light is travelling on. To Alice, Bob appears to move slower and slower, but never actually enters my future light cone. Alice will never know of Bob's betrayal. Clearly, Bob is a sneaky physicist. From Bob's perspective, because he's not travelling particularly fast, nothing out of the ordinary happens. He's perfectly able to meet up with me inside my future light cone. <laughs> well, this is really cool, but what's it got to do with black holes? Maybe at this point some of you have an inkling. The equivalence principle says that the force you feel as you are being accelerated is the same as the force of gravity. When I accelerate in my car, <laughs> yes, that is what it looks like, I feel a force on my back from the car seat, and that force is what accelerates me. The force of gravity is what keeps me stuck on the Earth. Einstein realised that these two forces were equivalent and coined the equivalence principle. Let's have a look back at our space-time diagrams. Alice had decided to accelerate away from me at a constant rate, and so she is experiencing a constant force. Einstein says that that force is equivalent to a gravitational force, so Alice could equally well be standing at a constant height above a gravitational body. Um, what about above a black hole? The hyperbolic world line that Alice lives on is in fact a line of constant height above the black hole. 
In an ordinary space-time diagram, lines of constant height are vertical. The presence of a gravitational body causes those lines to bend into hyperbolas. Since we can use any units of distance we like, let's just say that Alice is at height 7 above the centre of the black hole. I agree with you, it does seem a bit dodgy. But if you massage them the right way, this diagram is an accurate representation of the equations of general relativity. Bob was accelerating even harder than Alice, and so experienced a greater force. So Bob must be closer to the black hole than Alice. Let's draw in some hyperbolas of constant height above the black hole. Here's the hyperbola of height 6, and here's the one of height 5. So Bob is at height 4 above the black hole. The hyperbola of height 3 is actually the hyperbola that touches the origin. And where should we put the hyperbola of height 2? Remember the equations of general relativity that said what we're doing is fine? Well, they also say that the hyperbola of height 2 is here in the upper quadrant of this graph. The hyperbola of height 1 is slightly above that. What about when we are zero height above the centre of the black hole? Well, then we're at the centre of the black hole, the singularity. In the coordinates that we've chosen, that point in space is also represented by a hyperbola. Oh, in our race to the singularity we've forgotten something. At some distance away from the centre of the black hole, gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. That height is called the Schwarzschild radius, or the event horizon. Which of the hyperbolas that I've drawn represents the Schwarzschild radius? That's right, it's the one that touches the origin, at height 3. So what we thought was an ordinary space-time diagram was actually a picture of a black hole. What does that mean for the case when Bob and I meet up? Well, <laughs> first off it means that Bob is an idiot. He has agreed to meet me inside the event horizon of a black hole. Alice sees Bob getting closer and closer to the event horizon, but never sees him crossing it. From her perspective, Bob is also moving slower and slower. Bob, on the other hand, perfectly happily passes through the event horizon, without noticing anything. He can even meet up with me inside the black hole. When he looks back at Alice, he just sees her accelerating off to the right. Now I should make it clear that Bob and I are not necessarily alive. At some point, as we get closer to the singularity, the gravitational force will get strong enough to pull our bodies apart but that point could be anywhere inside the event horizon. It could even be a point outside the event horizon. Even as our bodies get disintegrated, our component atoms will continue to move towards the singularity at the centre of the black hole. Notice that even if my atoms were travelling at the speed of light, that is along 45 degree lines, they're inevitably going to end up on the singularity. There's no avoiding it. In fact, anything inside what we once called the future light cone, and we now call the Schwarzschild radius, is going to end up bumping into the singularity. Even light will. If we're outside the future light cone, outside the Schwarzschild radius, objects travelling fast enough can avoid the singularity. Just like the last flash of light from Bob, which makes it all the way to Alice's eye. Thank you for watching the video. I hope at least some of you followed it. Uh, I really struggled to try and fit everything into this one without making it too long. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe.